Hi class, Nisser Wells here with our instructions for our Earth's Magnetic Field Lab. So, Earth's magnetic field is important for a variety of reasons. And really, you can think of Earth, the entirety of Earth, as like a large magnet. Why is it important to understand Earth's magnetic field? The main reason is because our magnetic field protects us from cosmic radiation from the Sun. When you think about planets like Venus and Mars, planets that don't host complex life but theoretically are in our habitable zone, one of the main reasons that scientists argue as to why those planets cannot host complex life is their lack of a magnetic field. Our magnetic field is a result of Earth's active geology. So, in this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to find out some basic information about Earth's magnetic field using our lab quest and, some mag and a magnetic sensor. We're going to be able to use that data to figure out not just where the magnetic field is the strongest, not just the magnetic field around the Earth and what is, what is going on with that, but we're also going to be able to figure out where is the magnetic field coming from in the first place. Alright, so for this lab, all we're going to need is a magnetic field sensor and our lab quest. If you're watching this video from home, then all you're going to need to do is pretend that I'm your lab partner and follow along with me. So what we're going to do is collect data from four directions, north, east, south, and west, and then we're going to collect data up and down. So we're going to point at the atmosphere, and then we're going to point down below the surface into the geosphere. So the whole point of this is that we're going to collect data, and those six points should be enough to get a general sense of what's going on around us. So in a second here, I'm going to cut to my screen, and we'll collect the data together. So now we're going to start our data collection. So obviously the first thing you want to do is find out the sense of direction as to wherever you are when you're taking your data. It happens that straight in front of me right here is going to be due north. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to point my lab quest, point the magnetic sensor straight at due north, and I'm going to collect a reading. So on your screen, you should be able to see a live readout of what I'm looking at on my lab quest. Obviously, if you're doing this experiment on your own, you're going to find north, and then you'll collect a data point yourself. should be close, but it, it should be different. The sensor will move up and down depending on where you are, if you're outside, inside, and, and things like that. So I'm going to collect my point for north, and then I'm going to move to the east, and I'll collect my data point from the east, and then we'll move around to the south, and I'll collect my data point from straight south. And these should be really quick, so I got my point for south, and now I'll move over to the left. Hold due west, collect your data point. So that's what it should look like for the 360 degree circle. The last thing you want to do, we'll point up at the sky. And so we're actually taking magnetic sense of the atmosphere. And then I'll point down at the ground, and we'll get a magnetic sense of the underlying surface below our feet. So that should be it for data collection for now. Now that we have a sense of the orientation of Earth's magnetic field, let's talk about how the magnetic field forms in the first place. The scientific theory that explains this is called the dynamo theory. This is a complex theory about how an entire planet like the Earth can essentially become an, a large electromagnet and project a magnetic field out into space. What you need to know most about this theory is that the process is driven by the convection of liquid iron in the outer core. So first of all, we have to talk about the process of convection. Some of you may know this already from other science classes, but it starts out as a pretty simple thought. If you have a pot, let's say for example, at the bottom right here, we have a pot of hot boiling water. That hot water, the heat source is at the bottom, the hot water rises up to the top. Some of it is gonna be lost as water vapor, but some of it is gonna cool off and sink back down. So that whole process is called a convection cell. And actually, the same thing happens below the surface of the Earth as well. And so what we have here in the diagram of the Earth is we have the inner core, which is a solid, extremely hot. And the reason that it's a solid and not a liquid is just due to pressure. And then we have the outer core. Very hot, but a little bit cooler than the inner core. And so you have that same kind of boundary. You have warm liquid iron. So in this case, instead of water, it's just iron but you have warm liquid iron that starts at the bottom here and it'll rise up to here. Now, different things happen when it reaches the mantle and we'll talk about that later, but let's just assume we have a simplistic cell going on right here. So you have some material that's gonna cool off and sink back down. So just like the pot of boiling water, you have an entire convection cell created here. 
And you have to imagine that over the course of this entire diagram, this is going to be a process that replicates itself over and over and over again. Just like that. And so what's amazing is it's actually the projection of this convection cell that causes our magnetic field because you have convecting liquid iron. So it is the truth then that moving liquid iron can actually cause a magnetic field that projects all the way out into space. And so this is the magnetic field that protects us from all the things that we talked about earlier, the cosmic rays, keeps it uh, sustainable for complex life to evolve on the planet. And so one of the interesting things is you can almost imagine Earth's magnetic pole as a bar magnet, which is protruding through the Earth. It's a little bit of a silly example, but we can, we can actually do this. We'll imagine a bar magnet that's going through the core and going north and south on the planet. So how is this bar magnet going to be set up? Well, we have to know a few things first. So note that the south pole of an actual bar magnet is positive. So I wrote this kind of rule down here so we can think about it. So the south pole of a bar magnet is positive. So if we had like a normal common bar magnet, south pole is positive. We know that the north pole is negative. Now this is different. We found out in our lab that the north magnetic pole is also positive. So when we pointed our magnetic sensor north, that was the highest data that we got. And so these are different things. The south pole of a bar magnet is the most positive, and the north magnetic pole is also the most positive. So we have our north pole right here. We've got our south pole right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this figure, and the way that we're actually going to orient this is like this. So if we had a bar magnet that was started in our core and projected out into space, the south end of the bar magnet would actually be pointed north. So it is true then that the north magnetic pole behaves like the south pole of a bar magnet. It's kind of a confusing concept. It's one that maybe we should sit with for a second. And actually, we have to correct this figure a little bit, because what I have right now is the south pole of this bar magnet lined up directly with what we would call geographic north. That's the north pole, basically. It is actually true that right now, Earth's magnetic field is not exactly lined up with our geographic north. So magnetic north and geographic north are two different concepts. Geographic north is the north pole. And magnetic north is a little bit off of that. Uh, and magnetic north is wherever the magnetic field is the most positive. If we had a pole reversal, and so what I did really quick in this figure was I just flip-flopped that magnet. This would be mimicking a pole reversal. And so magnetic, the magnetic pole will flip, and it has flipped many times in the past. On average, the magnetic pole flips about every half of a million years, so 500,000 years. And actually, the last known magnetic pole reversal was 700,000 years ago. So it is possible that we're getting close to being overdue for one of these. If this was the case, then all of a sudden the north magnetic pole, because the north magnetic pole is positive and because the south pole of a bar magnet is positive, that would mean, actually, ironically, that the north magnetic pole would be in the southern hemisphere. And so that's kind of a kind of funny thing that gets really confusing, but if our magnetic pole flipped, that would be the case. But currently, this is flipped the other way, and so it should look just like that. A lot of you might be familiar with these colored pictures here over on the right. Some of you might have even seen these yourself here in Minnesota, or if you've ever gone up north. The aurora are really cool phenomena that are actually caused by our magnetic field. In fact, they're caused by the collision of the magnetic field with the charged solar wind. So we know we've talked about how the solar wind uh, is a dangerous force, potentially, on a planet. Uh, but this is an example of how the magnetic field actually protects us. So you see these ionized uh, chemical reactions that are happening as a result of the collision of charged particles with our magnetic field. So in the final part of the lab, we're going to talk about how we can prove that the magnetic field flips. The best way to do this, the original experiment that geologists used to prove this was through the process of seafloor spreading. And so what we're going to see right here, we're looking at a figure of brand new mid-ocean ridge forming. And so that is the result, as we know, of a divergent plate boundary. So we have divergence here at the mid-ocean ridge, two plates that are just starting to split apart. And what happens at that spreading center is you have magma from the mantle that rises up to create new ocean crust. Now what's interesting is that this magma is made out of mostly iron. When that iron crystallizes, 
you're going to have a rock that's called basalt, which is just an igneous rock. But when it's still in its magma form, that basalt can, the iron in the basalt can freely flow. And what's going to be, what's going to happen is that that iron is going to flow in the direction of the magnetic field. So that's a little bit complicated, but I think it'll make sense as we go across here. So now we have to imagine this white zone here is some new basaltic ocean crust that's forming along the mid-ocean ridge. And so as we said, the iron in that basalt is going to point towards wherever the magnetic field was the strongest. Magnetic polarity that, we, that is normal we'll call positive, and reverse polarity is negative. So right now we have normal polarity, which means that the magnetic field is lined up similar to geographic north. And so the iron that is forming at the mid-ocean ridge, so again we have magma here, and that iron that's forming the basalt is all going to point, let's say, north. And so you have positive polarity that's forming on both sides, normal polarity. So in the second picture here, we have a new event happening. So now we have this yellow zone. So this is still active spreading. Again, you got to think, this is at this mid-ocean ridge. This is just a process that keeps happening. But what's happened here on the Earth is that we've now had a pole reversal. So remember that we had positive polarity here and here. And what's interesting is that those rocks, when they form solid basalt, the minerals themselves are going to align and crystallize and freeze in that same direction. So this that positive polarity will always stay positive polarity. But what we have to imagine now is that we've had a magnetic field reversal. And so all of a sudden, this magma at, that's forming at the Mid-Ocean Ridge is going to be negative. Remember that we have positive and negative like that. So you, this was from time one. And now we have a new sample that's from time two. And finally, this is our last episode of seafloor spreading that we'll talk about. And so at this point, we've had two magnetic pole reversals, and it looks like we just had a third one. So we have new magma that's forming here. We've had a pole reversal. So once again, the data that we're going to get is going to be positive. But this is a completely different episode, so this is going to be time three. So three is the youngest event. Two is a pole reversal that happened a while ago, but was kind of in the middle between three and one. And then one is our oldest event. And so you can backtrace this all the way to the original episode of seafloor spreading. And this is what geologists use to find out the timings. Because what we can do as a geologist is, let's say we go to the boundary between two and three. We said that basalt is an igneous rock, so I could theoretically take a sample of rock from both sides of that magnetic pole reversal, find out the exact age of those rocks, and be able to figure out when it was that the magnetic field had flipped. Okay, now that we know a little bit more about Earth's magnetic field and how seafloor spreading can map out the history of magnetic pole reversals, we are going to perform an experiment that demonstrates uh, how geologists first begin to piece this concept together. A reminder that basalt, the igneous rock that makes up the bottom of the ocean floor, can and has been radiometrically dated to confirm all of our analysis that we're going to do in this lab. So the sandbox here represents the Atlantic Ocean. In this sandbox, I have buried several magnets that represent the magnetic trend that we have observed across this ocean floor. First, I'm going to do several sweeps across with the magnetic probe to see where the magnets are actually buried. Okay, so I've determined that my magnets are actually across the sandbox right here. So this will be different for whatever sandbox. I had to verify because depending on the sandbox I grabbed, uh, they could have been anywhere. Uh, they will always be horizontal. They will always be west to east, but they could have been anywhere along the uh, box here. But I kind of drew in a line right here. This is roughly where the magnets are in my sandbox. And so then what I have is I've set the lab quest. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a rate of uh, two samples per second, and your duration is gonna be 10 seconds. So this part we have to be really careful for, but what we're gonna do, so I'll hit okay on that. When you're ready, you're going to hit play on the lab quest, and you're gonna run this across, pointed down, so make sure that you have this oriented so that you're pointed down at the sandbox, and you're gonna slowly go across, making sure you time it right so it's about 10 seconds. 
if you screw up, it doesn't hurt to redo it because you want this data to be really accurate. You're going to be spending a decent amount of time analyzing post-processing this data. So what we're going to do is I'll hit play and we'll go slowly across over the course of 10 seconds. So this is how my data turned out when it was all said and done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, plug this into graphical analysis. So I've got this scanned into graphical analysis now. So your data won't look perfectly like this, but it should look pretty similar. Uh, make sure that you have a zero line here and that you definitely have points of data that are below zero and points of data that are above zero. That's gonna be really important. If you don't have that, it means you probably did something wrong. So ask me a question or uh, make sure that you follow up on that. You might have to redo the experiment. It's a really quick one, so that should be okay. And so, we're going to do some color coding with this graph. If you look at the set of questions below where you insert this screenshot, you're going to do some color coding. Let me know if you have any questions with that. And actually, as far as the procedure, that should be uh, all you have to do. Um, and so when you finish your color coding and you answer the questions, you're all done. Let me know specifically if you have any questions regarding anything that we've talked about in the lab. Otherwise, I think that should do it. Uh, this was our Earth Magnetic Field Lab. Thanks for watching.